Why should you eat vegetarian dishes? Again, it's a different, different um, ingredient pack. It could be a, a different um, texture in, in your mouth. It's a different, it's a different recipe. So you get to, you know, um, get to try something new, something exciting that you normally wouldn't have done, which is really cool. And it gets, I guess it just expands your palate as it were. Welcome to At Home with Chef D, with me, Chef D, in my beautiful studio kitchen. And you all know that I, we get to cater for some amazing bands throughout the year. And a lot of them are coming in with requests for doing a new vegetarian dish. And we always like to pride ourselves on trying something new and exciting. But I thought, hey, as we're learning throughout this season, I thought I'd bring somebody in that actually knows a whole lot more about vegetarian and, and also is a vegan. And, you know, I want to know the differences between both. Anyways, I want to introduce you to Lauren Holman. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. So this is really cool because we met totally unrelated. Yes. I was doing a video for something else and with your husband. Yes. And then we started talking. I went, you got to come on the show. <laughs> Which is very kind of you to have me. I, I'm super excited to be here and to talk to you more about vegetarian and vegan cooking. Okay, so what made you do this, the switch? You know, or was it always kind of, you, you've always kind of, been vegetarian or vegan? How did that all come about? So I was a pescatarian for a number of years mm -hmm. before switching. Um, then when I met my husband, I returned to an omnivore diet. For us, there were many factors and it, was, it wasn't it was an overnight switch, um, mm -hmm. which I think is a really big misconception when you hear about people turning vegetarian and vegan. It took me about <laughs> eight solid months of mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. and, and learning to get, to get there and, and actually say, yeah, I'm doing this for my life now. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, it was a number of factors, environment, personal health, animal welfare, they kind of all came together to become something that we wanted to work towards. That's very cool. And I, I went on your website, and can you share your website again? Sure, it's veganfoodwithgratitude.com. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing photographs. Mm -hmm. When you go on this website and you see the website and you see the photography, you're gonna want to eat everything on the <laughs> website. Trust me, I was just there again this morning. Um, and now you brought some staples and, mm -hmm. and now you said for the last five years you've been kind of experimenting more and learning more and that this learning. is never uh, a stop, you know, gap. And that's what's so great about cooking yeah. is that we get to learn every day, you know. Um, earlier in the season I got to make pie dough, <laughs> which is, yeah, that's a whole other story. But anyways, let's, I digress. So let's start off. Well, sure. What did you bring for us today? Sure. I brought a few things that mm -hmm. I would consider to be staples in a vegan food diet. Mm -hmm. So starting on the right, here we have hemp hearts, which are a okay. great, rich source of protein, has a very nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. I add these to my oatmeal in the morning, a wonderful salad topper. They're okay. also really high in magnesium and manganese, um, just a great all-around staple food. And now, can you take it right from there and put it on your salad? Right from there and you, put it on your salad, okay. yeah. Or you can cook it up. One of my favorite things to do in the morning is to add it to some frozen berries, stick them on the stove, warm it up, and then pour it over my oatmeal. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, that sounds yeah. really cool. Um, the next one is flaxseed, mm -hmm. which you can make an egg replacement for mm -hmm. um, any big or cooking that you're doing. It's also very high in protein, great omega-3 to omega-6 balance. It's wonderful, stable food, put it in smoothies all the time. I also, as I said, bake and cook with it. So at some point, we won't do it today because we don't have time, mm -hmm. but you and I are going to come back. Okay. We're going to make um, a flag egg, egg. egg. Exactly. And yeah. an aioli out of that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's it. Anyways, keep that in the back okay, of your mind. Sounds that's, great. That's truly what I want. It's a like. challenge. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, uh, Next yeast. one, it's nutritional yeast. Okay. Yeah, so this one actually is the complete protein winner. So mm. in five grams of nutritional yeast, you're getting two grams of protein, which is just crazy. I don't know mm. anything else you can get two grams of protein from five grams of something mm -hmm. except the one on the end, chlorella. <laughs> but uh, nutritional yeast, it has a very cheesy, rich flavor. So mm. I sprinkle this into pasta. Anything savory that I'm doing, even a salad, it doesn't have to be cooked. You can sprinkle it on raw or you can add it in. Uh, I so put it in a casserole. So the stew that I'm gonna do later, we can use a little put bit it, of that? Yeah, definitely. It'll give it a nice cheesy okay, texture. Perfect. That, that, that cheesy taste that you, yep. you think you can't get anywhere else but cheese. Uh, then there's chia, mm -hmm. which um, this is black chia. You can also get white chia, but this can be used in a chia pudding. I put this into baking also, smoothies. It's a great all-around food. Now, have you used the chia in making jams? I cooking? have chia jam, fantastic. Isn't it great? It's so great, and it's a really healthy, nice alternative to some store-bought jams that you're going to find. And yeah. you've done that in the past, as I mentioned to you at this top, is that we get to cater for a bunch of different bands. So I thought, you know, again, trying something different so I made some um, strawberry jam, 
Mm. Unbelievable. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. It has this really amazing texture to it when you add it to liquid mm -hmm. that you just can't really mimic. Maybe to compare it to tapioca would be the exactly. best way mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also great for digestion because when it gets that tapioca-like tapioca coating around it, it really aids in clearing out your digestive tracts. And then chlorella. <laughs> so this one, it looks like a supplement mm -hmm. because I do have it in tab yep. form today. You can also get it in a powder. Put a little bit yeah, out, and you okay. can add it to your smoothies. You can have it however. I pick one up. Yep, just pop it right in your mouth. So I take a handful of it every time before I work out and when I get home from the gym also. It's an extremely it's dense. Very green. Yeah, um, it's very green. Yeah. It's a form of algae, great source of protein also. Um, but this would be the equivalent in Asia to how we use vitamin C. It is just so nutrient packed, so good for you, and it's heavily underused in the Western diet. And it tastes good. It does. It like doesn't have like, that weird fishy I, 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 taste. Okay, I was, yeah. I was really leery. Yeah. Then I'm going to go, this is going to taste really bad, right? Yeah. Well, and when I say green, I mean like when you, you know, when you go out and it, we can't do it right now, yeah. but you know, grass and, and grains and that sometimes, you know, when you just smell it and taste it, it just, yeah, or even sometimes like arugula. When you get like really fresh from the, mm -hmm. the garden, that uh, yeah, are fantastic. So there's a reason that spirulina isn't up here, and I put chlorella up instead. Mm -hmm. In the Western diet, a ton of people have heard of spirulina. It is great for you, but it can sometimes have that fishy taste that mm -hmm. people don't want to add to their smoothies or cooking. Chlorella is actually a really great form of B12, and it gets around some of the problems that have recently come to light with spirulina, and it doesn't have that fishy taste. So it's great for protein, has an excellent source of B12, as well as other uh, micronutrients. So if if somebody comes to you or, or comes to us and says, you know, my daughter or son, whatever, wants to change from, you know, the regular North American diet, mm -hmm. I want to become more vegetarian, more conscious of what I'm eating. What would your number one suggestion or, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> thought process be when you yeah. say that? So every parent's nightmare. No, um, my, par <laughs> my parents had to go through it and Brent's mom had to go through it and they both handled it beautifully. Mm -hmm. What they've both done is super unique from each other and is also completely different from what I've done. They took that as a challenge to go back and look at some of their favorite family recipes. So Brent's mom is a lot of homestyle cooking, mm -hmm. very deep Mennonite traditional cooking. Mm -hmm. And she's taken that and veganized it beautifully. My mom is a more European background, as I mentioned to you off air, cabbage rolls, stews, go like goulash hearty things that you would think would normally have a lot of meat in it she's taken it and run with it and just fantastic for me I um, want it to be a little fresh and maybe a bit um, yeah fresh different so I have taken it as a personal challenge to find new ways to include vegan options where previously they might not exist but in all of those cases what they've done is start with the basics so take something that you're already pretty comfortable with and just swap the meat out and work from there and it's just like regular cooking mm -hmm. folks you know learn by your mistakes you get to challenge yourself. When you come back, I'm gonna be doing some uh, different recipes that I've come up with, and then Lauren's gonna come back in the last segment and taste some of the dishes that I've made, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about chickpeas and the importance of using the juice to make egg whites. I kinda like egg whites. Won't you join me? Cooking with Chef D. Hey, welcome back. We're cooking vegetarian today, and this is a really great exercise for me personally because it expands my repertoire of cooking and also helps us when we're doing other events that, um, you know, makes us think a little bit outside our, our comfort zone. And this is outside my comfort zone, so here we go. So we're going to start off by making a chickpea stew. So I have my pan, I'm warming my pan up. I'm going to add just about two tablespoons of olive oil. Olive oil. And then I have a mirepoix. So we have carrots, onions, and celery diced up. Very French, very in its, um, they use it a lot for different stocks and sauces, and that's how it all starts. We're just warming up our olive oil so you have that beautiful bouquet coming up, and away we go. So we're gonna put our onions and that in. You wanna hear the sizzle when you put it in? And we're adding about two cups of our blend. And we're gonna stir that together. Now, if you remember, our good friend, Chef Christian Pritchard brought us this amazing herb sea salt from Italy, so we're gonna add a little bit of that in. It has a little bit of sage and thyme in, so it's gonna give that really rich flavor. And again, you know, um, we're not cooking with a lot of fat, so we're not gonna get our flavor from that. We're gonna get it from the vegetables and everything that we put in it. So 
So it's probably about, if you're keeping track, about a, a teaspoon of seasoning. We're gonna warm that up. Now, as it's reducing down and we want it to actually kind of um, caramelize, so it's gonna take about five minutes. So while we're doing, while it's doing that, we're gonna be doing something different. And this is truly one of my favorite salads. It's a cucumber linguine. So it looks like linguine on the plate, but it, we're using the cucumber. So we have to use a mandolin. Now, we have the French mandolin here, stainless steel, but if you're looking for an inexpensive one, you can probably get a German one for about 35 bucks, um, and they work fantastic. And so we're just gonna take it now. If there's, um, there's usually uh, protection on it, so I don't have mine with me today. The producer's already giving me that eye, but just uh, I take it nice and slowly. You're just gonna take your cucumber down, keep turning it over. Don't have to go fast. And you wanna use a seedless cucumber, um, a normal like um, field cucumber. The seeds kinda come out way too far and they're too big. And then if you cut into them, sometimes they're bitter. So a seedless cucumber works the best, English cucumber. And there we go. Take it. Again, you can just see, it just kind of breaks apart nicely. We're gonna put this into our bowl. Then we're gonna add to it. We're gonna add some mango, some fresh mango. I've just sliced it around, you know, just kind of right to the, the uh, seed. And now we're just gonna cut it up into a nice julienne, nice and fine. We're gonna put our, that in with our cucumber. I'm using one whole mango. Just nice and fine. Really easy. Put that in. Finally, last. Grab our tongs. We're gonna stir this together. It's a beautiful color. Now, you can go many different directions with this. You could use a soya-based mayonnaise and use that as kind of like a coleslaw type dressing. Or I have one here that's just really simple. It's a little bit of Dijon mustard, some apple cider vinegar, and some organic canola oil. I love putting it in a mason jar, that way you can shake it up and it's always ready to go for you. So we're gonna put that in, just a touch of that. A little bit of black pepper. Just a touch of salt. Now remember, whenever you add salt to cucumbers, it's gonna start dredging any of the water of the cucumber out. So just usually, maybe be just before you serve it, that's when you wanna season it just in a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. You all know why I use Himalayan pink salt on the show, right? It just looks good. It's a joke, it's a chef humor. That's all, as good as it gets. So we're gonna stir that in. Now. Grab a plate. We're gonna put it on our plate. Again, Lauren was talking about some hemp hearts, so we're gonna put some hemp. Give that nutty flavor. Simple, easy, quick salad. Absolutely tastes great. You can garnish it with some arugula, wherever you want to go with it. Now, our mirepoix is starting to reduce down. The onions are becoming translucent, is what we're looking for. And what we're going to add now is I've roasted off some amazing grape tomatoes from our good friends out at Elmira Zone. And you can get their tomatoes all year round, which is so great. And whenever you roast the tomato, it brings the natural sugars out, which gives it even more flavor. 
and they're just fantastic. And the great thing about them is that they grow year round and they don't taste like styrofoam. But now because they're growing here, we have lots of flavor and they're good to go. So we used one whole pint of um, grape tomatoes. Now, all I did was roast them off 350 in the oven, a little bit of olive oil, and you're good to go. Stir that in. Just gonna let that reduce down a little bit more. And while we're doing that, I'm just gonna warm up. I have some white, white, sorry, white vinegar in my pan here. I'm gonna add one half a cup of maple syrup into our pan. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. And when then that starts boiling, we have some red onions here. We're gonna put some onions in. We're gonna make pickled red onions to go on a different dish. It's absolutely fantastic. Great accompaniment to anything. So when we come back, we'll finish this up. I'm gonna add my chickpeas and away we go. Hey, welcome back to At Home with Chef D here in the studio kitchen where we're talking all things vegetables and vegetarian. Our stew is, is slowly doing its thing now. We're going to add a little bit of the yeast in to give it that cheesy, rich flavor that Lauren was talking about. And I'm just excited because I want to taste this. I haven't tried this before, so this is really cool. And now, because we've added um, our roasted tomatoes and our, our vegetables are, are starting to melt in, I've actually roasted off some uh, red um, green and onions. So we're going to add this to our dish now. And this, a little bit of vegetable stock. Incorporate that all together. It's starting to smell really great. I'm going to hit it with just a little, one half of a Meyer lemon, so that beautiful orange and lemon flavor. In that goes, and that will be amazing. So we have our maple syrup and our vinegar. Um, it's come up to a boil. Now I have a whole bunch of red onions here. They're going to go in. And then as soon as that uh, mixture comes back up to a boil again, we're going to turn it off and just let it marry together. And you have some simple red onions, pickled red onions that you can use at any point in any dish that you want as a nice garnish, maybe on your salads. Also gives it some nice color and away we go. So once that comes up to a boil, turn it off and you're good to go. You can put it in a mason jar, seal it, and it'll last up to three to five weeks in your refrigerator. If you don't um, put it in the refrigerator, it's gonna last about three to five days. So we'll let that go. Now, we're gonna make something really cool. I think um, this is one of the coolest um, appetizers slash canapé that we've been making over the season um, that invites everything together. So we have some dates, we have some cranberries, raisins, almonds, and then we have some carrots and coconut. So we're gonna put this together and we're gonna add in a little bit of ginger, a touch of cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, the almonds, like I said, the coconut. Remember how we had in the last segment, we did a little bit of the uh, cucumber linguine? the center of the cucumber, some raisins, our cranberries, our dates, and of course carrots, just shredded. Um, you can use, if you don't want to shred them, you can cut them up nice and fine and they'll work really nicely for you. Just a little bit of almond flour, and then some olive oil. About, probably about three quarters of a cup of olive oil. You can use the canola oil if you wanted to. I just like the olive oil because it's going to give you that beautiful rich flavor. And then we have some, okay, this is where I go a little bit over the other side. We have some cognac. Um, we have some basalmic, sorry. We have some basalmic that's been aged in cognac casts. Just give it a little dash. If you don't have this, you can always use lemon and lime juice. It works really well together. Then we're going to add it to our food processor.
And now this is going to take between 30 seconds and a minute, depends on the power of your food processor. And it's just going to all come together into a nice little ball. And then we're going to roll it in coconut. Our mixtures come together very nicely. So we're going to grab a spoon. Can I mention how much I love being in the studio here? I can describe it, it's all right here. So we're going to take about a little bit than an inch. I'm just going to roll that into the coconut. And there you have it. Now you can let it sit in the refrigerator to let it set some more. If you want to make this the day before, which is absolutely fantastic way of doing it, because then that way all the flavors kind of melt together and just it just mm, so good. So we're gonna do one more. And we're gonna get ready for my quinoa salad. So I've created some recipes, so I thought I'd bring Lauren back on to taste them. Um, welcome back. Thank you. But before we get started on tasting, your job of tasting all this great food. <laughs> Best job, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the liquid that's on top of chickpeas that you, I've, I know we can make into almost like an egg white, right? Yeah, it's called aquafaba. And Can what you do the camera that? is you drain the liquid out of a can of chickpeas and it's a very fancy word for chickpea juice. And essentially you can whip it with a little bit of um, lemon or cream of tartare into a meringue. You can make a beautiful pavlova with it, as you mentioned, an egg replacement. Mm -hmm. It really is this wonderful juice that is actually just chickpea water. And I've made it with um, lentil and apple muffins, mm. just to give it some body exactly. in that. It's absolutely fantastic. So just one last, because I know quinoa, you know, everybody talks quinoa, quinoa, mm -hmm. quinoa, right? So I thought this is just something that a little bit different that I like doing, um, that we've had very good um, feedback from. So these are our pea shoots. Um, you can probably see the one behind me that's gone crazy. And we've been saving this basil plant oh, all lovely, shooting yeah. long, trying to make it like live a little bit longer. So we're gonna take, a, I have some baby arugula here. I have some of our pea shoots. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of our quinoa. And this is the fastest way that I find mm. of cooling quinoa down. And then you can freeze it from here, just like this, wrap it in some saran wrap, and away you go. Yeah. And then just a little bit of crunch of our quinoa here. And then what I've done, and we've talked about this off air, is this is cauliflower, rice cauliflower. Mm -hmm. And you also make it just yes, totally into the rice dish, right? I do, actually, I make the, so you, it only works with fresh cauliflower. Mm -hmm. I haven't found a way to use frozen, but using fresh cauliflower, essentially just clean it, put it in your food processor, and you just wanna dice it up a little bit until it's the texture of rice. Send it into a frying pan with some of your favorite herbs and spices, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. So we're gonna just put this onto our salad. Another way of getting vegetables you know, if you're not a vegetarian, into your diet, really nice, nice and easy. And then finally, I love frozen peas. I do too, you know? <laughs> yeah, so many uses, so delicious. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of that on. And then this is really simple, just a little bit of fresh lemon juice, and you have a great salad. Wonderful. With some real great crunch and flavor, actually. That would be a wonderful combination. And then we'll just garnish it with some of the pickled red onions, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna let you try the mango, cucumber, linguine, and I'm gonna chop up some fresh basil here. It looks so good, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> Not today you are. <laughs> we live in the country, I'm sorry, I should have warned you about this. We've had neighbors come in throughout the shooting, so yeah, you know what, I'll get you something else. Why you gotta you try, try something, thank Why you. you <laughs> now, what I'm doing here is just chopping up some fresh basil, because basil is the one herb that isn't the best cooked, you know? It's just really nice and fresh, so we're just gonna finish this up. Can I try this still? Mm -hmm. Or is someone else gonna walk away? <laughs> I don't know. Mmm. <laughs> really nice, fresh, lots of flavor. It's like an energy, you know, a little pop mm -hmm. of energy, mm -hmm. right? So sweet, so flavorful. So I'm just gonna finish up by garnishing it with our red pickled onion. And I'm gonna sneak another bite okay, while you're doing perfect. that. <laughs> and so, simple, easy recipes. We try and make it as, as friendly as possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you for thank coming you in. Will me. you come back? I would love to come back. I wanna taste everything though, still. <laughs> okay, perfect. Hey, till next time, I'm Chef D. Won't you join me here in my home, the studio kitchen?
if you're able, we'll be at the kitchen table, cooking, cooking with Chef Keith.